Our programs are a lot more interesting when we can get data from our keyboard into our program and then print the characters that we need as words and variables to the screen. To do that, we need a library called Standard Input and Output, which you can get into your code by pound including in uh, square and uh, angle braces um, stdio.h. Now, if you forget to do that at the top of your code, most GCC compilers will see that you try to use the functions printf and scanf and will add stdio.h for you, but it will give you a warning. So it's good practice to add pound include stdio.h at the top of your code. Now, what exactly are the characters that it can read from the keyboard and print to the screen? They're um, anything you see on your keyboard stored in a table called the ASCII table. Let's take a look at that ASCII table. So the decimal numbers from 0 to 127, so the first half of uh, an unsigned char, uh, have um, all the characters you would see on a teletype machine, which you're probably not familiar with because they haven't been around for a long time. But we can see visible characters starting at decimal 32 is the space character. OK, that's not very visible. But the uh, decimal 33 is the exclamation point. And then we get some special characters. Then we get numbers then we get capital letters, and then we get lowercase letters. Um, and then an extended ASCII table goes all the way to 255 with some other special character. So what does this mean? Um, if we tried to print, uh, if we wanted to print, for instance, the capital letter K, we would tell the uh, printf function to print the decimal equivalent of the number 75. So every character that you display can come back to either a binary, decimal, or hexadecimal number. So how does the printf function work? Well, inside of printf, uh, we can say double quotes, whatever we want to say, hello. And at this line of code, uh, to our computer screen, we'll get printed whatever we put in the double quotes. Now, the way it works is that there's a cursor on your screen. So it will print H-E-L-L-O and move the cursor to the end. And it will leave the cursor after the O, which means that the next thing that gets printed will be concatenated at the end of hello. So there are special characters, slash r and slash n. This is carriage return, and this is new line. You might be familiar with those if you've ever used a, a typewriter. Uh, carriage return says, move the cursor back to the beginning of this line. New line says, go down to the next line. Now, this is a little confusing. I always forget which is which. But on uh, Windows systems, you might only need slash n because it's interpreted as a slash r and slash n. And in other systems like Linux and Mac, you might need slash r and slash n. Practice around. If you use only slash n, sometimes you'll see that hello will get printed, and you'll go down, you won't go back, and then hello will be printed, and so on. So if you see a stairwise fashion, you need that extra slash r. Now, how can we print the value of a variable? Let's say I have uh, int i equals 4, and I could do printf. How do I specify I would like to print the value of whatever i is? Well, we have percent. And then there's a table, if we Google uh, what we can put in for printf, d is a stand-in for any kind of integer. And maybe I'll put in my slash r slash n so that the cursor moves down after this. Oops, we don't want to put that yet. And then we'll say comma, the variable that we want to place in there. We could do the same thing with a floating point number. Uh, often the floating point numbers, though, could go very long. So how do we specify uh, how many decimal points we would like to print? So to get a float, we'll do a percent %f. But if we want to specify how many characters to print, we could say a number dot a number and then f for our float and tell it we want to print pi. And the six in this case is the total number of characters to print at minimum. And the four is how many decimal points to print, how many numbers to print after the decimal point. Six includes the decimal point. So this says I want to print at least six numbers. Um, and I want, uh, I want six characters and four numbers to come after the decimal point. So in this case, we would get exactly what we wanted because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven characters long. So that would print fine. But if we only wanted to print 3.14, that's only four total characters. 
So what this print statement would do is it would print two spaces and then 3.14, so four total characters and up to uh, four here, or maybe it would do two extra back here. Um, that's something to test out. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about scanf, which is a little more complicated. So scanf says grab something from um, the keyboard and when it hits that line of code, it will wait until the enter key is pressed on your keyboard. So first I need to make um, a place for the thing I'm going to store, and it's usually an array of characters. So in C, unless we're using string.h, which we're not gonna get that far, so we, we don't have a string variable type. Instead, we have character arrays. So I will call it m for message, and I'll store up to 20 characters coming in from the keyboard. So this is an array of uh, uh, characters, and each character is one you know, ASCII letter. So now I can say scanf from a string, percent %s, and put it into my message. One thing that should look strange here is um, m is the name of, uh, that's the pointer to this array. So scanf always takes pointers here. So if I had int i, and I was going to scanf a uh, integer, where am I going to put the value that I got? I have to tell scanf an address to put that integer. So I have to put ampersand i. If that ampersand isn't there when I'm reading things like ints and floats uh, and characters, which would be the letter C, um, it's not going to work. But if I'm trying to get a character array, I could just put the name of my character array because that already is the pointer. <clears throat> 